This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Another trilogy comes to an end, and with it, another chapter in this decades-long saga. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things to remember before seeing Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. We're taking a look at key details to remember before heading into the final installment in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Let's get to it. Number 10. It's going to have a deep connection to the previous trilogies. Disney has made it very clear that they intend this film to conclude the Skywalker saga, at least for the time being, that is. What lucrative franchise ever really ends these days? In order to do this successfully, however, and make up for some of the frustration caused by The Last Jedi, they're gonna need to tie all nine movies together in a way that's both organic and satisfying. The return of more familiar faces from previous installments confirms that this is a film that seeks to engage with the franchise history that came before it. How successful it will be in this regard, however, we'll just have to wait and see. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1! Never tell me the odds. Number 9. The ending has been planned out from the beginning. It's no secret that when Disney bought Star Wars from George Lucas, they took a look at his planned sequel trilogy and then decided to go in a different direction. Nevertheless, I'm taking Captain Solo and his friends. Because The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi seem to be somewhat at odds in terms of the plot points and themes that each prioritized, many were quick to call out the trilogy as unfocused. According to Adam Driver, however, key plot points in this final film were planned out from the start. Speaking with Vanity Fair, Driver said that his character's arc had, quote, an end in sight even from the very beginning. Number 8. J.J. Abrams Returns as Director When Disney announced plans for the next trilogy in the Star Wars saga, they revealed that rather than selecting one director, they'd be giving each installment to a different filmmaker. In 2013, J.J. Abrams was announced as the director of the first film, The Force Awakens. The following year, Ryan Johnson confirmed rumors he'd direct Episode 8, and in 2015, Colin Trevorrow was slated to direct Episode 9. In 2017, however, Trevorrow left the production as a result of creative differences, and shortly thereafter, it was announced that things would be coming full circle, with Abrams once again taking the reins. Given that The Force Awakens was notably less divisive than The Last Jedi, the news was generally well received. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? I'm trying to come up with a plan. Number 7. The Scriptwriters Before he left production, Trevorrow did extensive work on the script with frequent collaborator Derek Connolly, apparently turning in multiple drafts. In 2017, however, shortly before the announcement of Trevorrow's departure, screenwriter Jack Thorne was brought in to do a rewrite, which in the eyes of many was confirmation that Disney was dissatisfied with Trevorrow's direction. After Abrams signed on to direct, he and screenwriter Chris Terrio put together yet another script, while Connolly and Trevorrow were given story credits. Abrams, for his part, also consulted with Ryan Johnson, George Lucas, and co-writer of multiple Star Wars films, Lawrence Kasdan. Number 6. The Knights of Ren Among the most intriguing things teased in The Force Awakens were the mysterious Knights of Ren. Unfortunately, this band of elite warriors remained elusive during The Last Jedi, much to the frustration of fans eager to make their acquaintance. Thankfully, this band of presumed badasses will finally be getting the screen time they deserve in The Rise of Skywalker. But in the meantime, here's a little primer. Serving under Kylo Ren, they're neither Jedi nor Sith, but fight using the dark side of the Force. Suffice it to say, we cannot wait to see them in action, though we suspect the results may very well be devastating to our heroes. Even you, master of the Knights of Ren, have never faced such a test. Number 5. Four spirits mean that Luke, among others, will likely return. There's no keeping a good Jedi down. In Star Wars canon, light side force users can learn to extend their life beyond their mortal bodies as force spirits. In this form, they can become visible and continue to interact with the living. If you honor what they fight for, yes. If you choose to face Vader, you will do it alone. 
I cannot interfere. Though incredibly challenging to accomplish, and rare even among Jedi, the ability is shared by Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and Anakin Skywalker. Apparently, Luke has also become a Force spirit, based on his return for this final film after his Kenobi-esque demise. No. Strike me down in anger and I'll always be with you." In interviews, J.J. Abrams has been quite evasive as to the extent of what he believes Force spirits can do, but all signs point to them playing a role in the film. Number 4. The Return of the Emperor The Force is strong with you. The son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi. Okay, this is one thing that we did not see coming, especially considering the lack of foreshadowing in the previous two films. Sure, there were fans out there who suspected that Snoke was somehow Palpatine, or even Palpatine's mentor, Darth Plagueis, but when Snoke got cut down, it seemed as if the third film would focus on the conflict between Rey and Kylo Ren. <laughs> We know very little about the when, where, how, or why of it all, but we do know with certainty that Palpatine has a part to play, with actor Ian McDermott returning to reprise the role. How it all fits together, only time will tell, but consider us already on the edge of our seats. No one's ever really gone. <laughs> Number 3. Rey's parentage may be notable after all. The Force Awakens put a fair amount of emphasis on the mystery of Rey's heritage. From her feelings of abandonment to the vision she has when visiting Maz Katana, it's heavily implied that there's a mystery to unravel. Whomever you're waiting for on Jakku, they're never coming back. And then in The Last Jedi, Kylo Ren dismisses Rey's parents as nobodies. They're filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. At the time of the film's release, director Ryan Johnson seemed content to take the villain at his word, but fans, not so much. And actress Daisy Ridley apparently sides with fans on the matter. Whatever her parentage, it seems that the character's past will be further explored, at least based on comments made by the actress. And considering that Dark Ray tease in the trailer, there are a lot of possibilities. Number 2. John Williams is back at it one last time. In Empire of Dreams, the story of the Star Wars trilogy, George Lucas talks about hearing John Williams' iconic score for the first time. The director makes it clear just how much it moved him, and what a crucial role it played in bringing the movie together. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. It goes without saying, but through his work on Star Wars, Williams has gifted fans some of the most effective and memorable scores in movie history. As such, it's an immense relief that, after some health issues in 2018, Williams was able to complete the soundtrack for The Rise of Skywalker, which he's made clear will be his last Star Wars film. Before we unveil the most important detail to remember, here are some honorable mentions. Well, how could they be jamming us if they don't know if we're coming? Break off the attack! The shield is still up! You're coming together. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Unused footage of Carrie Fisher One of the most exciting things about this new trilogy of Star Wars films was that, in addition to introducing a new generation of heroes to the beloved galaxy far, far away, it brought back the original trio. The rough plan appeared to give Han, Luke, and Leia each their own film in which to shine, with the third and final movie set to be Carrie Fisher's moment in the spotlight. You change your hair. Same jacket. 
Tragically, she passed away on December 27, 2016. Though there was no new footage of her for The Rise of Skywalker, the filmmakers planned to give the character of Leia Organa a proper send-off using unused footage from The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Here's hoping it does the incredible actress justice. Star Wars would not be the same without the legendary Carrie Fisher. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And check out this video. This video was made in partnership with Newbie, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.